Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a photo montage using Photoshop. Specifically, I have four different pictures of cats that we've had over the years, and I want to group those all together onto a single sheet that I could share online or maybe get printed. I have this image of our cat, Eddie, who is sadly in kitty heaven. I have this of our cat Jonesy, this is Rocky, and this is Adrian. And I want these four images onto a single sheet. Now I mentioned we're going to be using Photoshop to this for this. So open up Photoshop, click over here where it says create new. We're going to create a new document. Now I have one set here, relatively large, a width of 30 inches. You could just type this right in, go to this drop down, make sure you're on inches. A height of 20. Now you want to put in here whatever size you plan to print. I want to get a really large print. Uh, so I'm going to have 30 by 20, resolution of 300, RGB color 8 bit. Background contents I'm going to make white. And that's it. Just as simple as that. And we'll click create. So it's going to give us this background layer. Now I have these four images of the cats, but I need to place them on here in a very specific way. So I want to put kind of placeholders down. These placeholders uh, serve two purposes. They're just there to help us put the image down in the correct area. But also we're going to clip the image of a cat to the specific placeholder it goes so that when we resize the image of the cat that it will stay in that spot. Now you'll see what I mean when we go or as we go. So let me create a new layer for this. We're going to create this new layer. And we have that layer on top. Now I want to fill this with a specific color. I'm going to hold in the shift key and hit the delete key on my Mac. It is a um, shift backspace key on a PC. And it really doesn't matter what color you fill it with. I'm going to use 50% gray though. I think we'll fill it gray just like that. So now we have this single placeholder. Now we need four of these and they have to be like half as high and half as wide because one's going to be in the top left, another in the top right, and so on. So we're going to resize this. We want to go into free trans transform mode. Hit Command or Control T to do that. Then look up here at the top. See this uh, little lock? Make sure that is locked. And what you could do is you could go to either the width or the height and just change it to 50. And when you do that, you'll get, because that is locked, it's changing the height accordingly. Now, if you were doing a montage and you need it maybe just one third high, but you want the same width or something like that, like one image on top and one image on the bottom, then you would unlock this and type in your correct width and height percentages. Or you could go on the far left and put the actual pixel size to make the box fit where you want it to fit. But in this case, because each image is going to be the same exact size and it's going to be half as high and half as wide as the background layer. I could just keep that locked, put 50% in there and hit that checkbox. We're good. Now I'm going to get the move tool, hit the V key on your keyboard for the move tool. It's top tool in the top left hand area there. We'll move that up here. So that's the top left. So I'm going to even rename that, right? You don't have to rename it, but I'm going to top left. All right, now I need one for the top right. I'm just going to duplicate this layer. Hit Command or Control J to duplicate it. Get the Move tool again, the V key, and just move it to the right. Now this says Top Left Copy. I'm going to just change that to Top Right. Now I need one below it, so I'm just going to duplicate it hit again. Hit Command J. Um, if you have trouble moving it, like you're trying to, you know, and you don't, whatever, you know, if you're having trouble doing that, just Hold the shift key down when you move it and then it won't let you go sideways. You could only move it either all the way down or all the way to the side uh, horizontally. And we're going to make this now lower right. Okay. And finally, we're going to duplicate that. Hit Command or Control J. Hold the shift key in and move it to the left just like that. So it clicks in there and then we're going to name this lower left. So we have our placeholders in there. And I just want to reorder them. I want to just, you don't even have to do this. This is just my brain making me do this. I want to go from top left to top right, lower left to lower right, just like that. All right. Now we need to load our 
images. Now you could load them into one document as a stack. That takes a little longer than if you just simply go up to uh, File, Open. I have them on my desktop, they're right here, four of them. Just select all of them, click Open. It will open them all into individual tabs. Now, these images are smaller than their placeholders. So when I do move them over there, I'm going to have to resize them, make them bigger. Whenever you enlarge anything, you'll lose resolution. And uh, one way though, that it will help you not lose resolution is if you take each image and make that layer a smart object. We'll start with our cat Eddie here. We're going to just right click right on the layer and go down to convert to smart object. So now it's a smart object. So when I resize it, it won't lose the resolution. I'm going to get the move tool. I have it open already. It's the V key. Just click right on Eddie's face, drag him up to that tab that is our background and put it there. Now it's on this left hand side where I want it to be. Maybe to make it easier and for you to see, I'll turn off the other three placeholders. So we just have the one. Now, the way it stands now, if I pull it, see how he's coming off the placeholder. And if I resize him, if I hit command T to resize, I could, he's not staying on his placeholder. So what I want to do is I want to clip him to that placeholder. To do that, make sure it is directly above the placeholder that it's going to get clipped to. And you can see it is right click and then go down to create clipping mask. Now you'll notice when he moves, he does, he stays there. Basically he just disappears at the edges. So when I hit command T to resize, it just stays or only appears where that placeholder is. See, so I could kind of move him around. I could come back in here and remove this if needed. I'll just kind of make it bigger like that. All right, for now, that's good. Let's go to top right. So we need a cat for over the top right. That one, I think we'll put Jonesy over there. So I'll click on him. Now again, I want to make this a smart object. Right click, convert to smart object. Get the move tool again. We have it open. Click, drag him up there, put him on his placeholder. Again, we don't want him to go over the top of Eddie, right? So we need to clip him to this placeholder. The placeholder is here, but Eddie is way up here. We need to drag that layer so he's directly above that placeholder. Then right click on the layer of Eddie and go down to create clipping mask. Now you'll see he won't overlap on Eddie. So we'll go like that, click command T and we'll resize him. So he kind of fits in there like that. Click the little check box. All right, now let's go to the lower left. Lower left, let's put Rocky. So we have Rocky. Again, we need to make it a smart object. Right click, go down to convert to smart object. Got the move tool, drag him up to that layer, place him on his placeholder, clip him to his placeholder by moving him. This is him right here. We got to move him right above that lower left placeholder. Right click on the layer of, of Rocky and create clipping mask. So you could double check, make sure that he disappears. Yes, he does. Go right there, hit Command T, and let's resize him. He kind of fits in there. All right, so far so good. Now, one thing I should add, you see how when I'm, it's keeping its proportions when I drag those handles? If by accident or in your previous step, if you unlock this lock, what will happen is you'll you could squish them. <laughs> so you want to keep the proportions. So make sure you have that, um, that locked kind of like that. So something like that, I guess. And click the checkbox. I don't have them lined up real well. There we go. All right. So there's there. Now we have this last one, the lower right, and that leaves Adrian for that one. So we'll go up to our layer or our, document that has Adrian in it. And we're going to create a smart object, right click, convert to smart object, move her with the move tool and put her on her placeholder. Again, we want to clip her to that placeholder, right click, create clipping mask. If she's clipped and make sure she is, and she is hit command T and resize. Okay. So far, so good. I'm going to click the check mark. All right. Now I don't like these real hard edges here. 
I'm gonna show you two different ways you could get rid of this. This first way probably won't look very good on this image because this is a high key image and it's black and white. What you could do is you could put borders here. You could either put a white border or a black border. Um, to do that, you wanna get the rectangular marquee tool. First of all, before we do that, we should create a new layer at the very top. So make sure you're on the top layer as it is now and go down here and create a new layer. So we have this new layer up here. Make sure you're clicked on that layer. You want to get that rectangular marquee tool. Hit the M key for marquee on your keyboard. Make sure you're using the rectangular marquee and not the ellip ellip elliptical marquee tool. They both have the same keyboard shortcut. So uh, where do we want to start? Let's start right here horizontally. And what you want to do is start off the edge. See, I'm off the edge to the right. And you want to draw a very small rectangle. Now you're just trying to make it equidistant on either side because you're creating a border. All right. So this is going to be a border. And now you want to fill it with either black or white. If you look over here, a real easy way you could do this, a couple different ways. You could hold the shift key and hit the delete key on your keyboard like we did before and change this to black or white. You could do it that way. That's one way. A faster way, if you want to know a faster way. If you have black and white in your swatches over here, let's say you want to fill it with black. Just hold in the alt or option key. Alt if you have a PC option, if you have the Mac, and hit the delete key and you'll fill it with that foreground color. Options for the foreground, option delete for the foreground, um, command or control delete uh, for the white uh, color. So we have that. So just like that, we have a border. Now we could do the mar rectangular marquee tool again, or we could just duplicate this by hitting command J. And once it's duplicated, you could hit free transform by hitting command T. And then you could just take it and pivot it around so it's vertical like this, right? And hit the checkbox. So now you have black borders in this case. Um, if you want to then join these together, just hit Command E and it will, when you're on the top layer, and it will put them together in one layer. Now I mentioned I don't think that black border looks good on this. It looks okay, but. I might want to do something else. So I'm going to throw that out and I'll show you another thing you could do. What you could do is you could feather the edges of each of the image images so that that gray box kind of shows through a little bit. Now I have gray boxes. You could have a purple box. You know, when I created the gray box, you could have any color box. I happen to have used gray. So what I want to do is I want to hold the command or control key down and click on one of those boxes like this one. You can see I have a selection there. And I'm on the um, image of my cat, Eddie. Now what I want to do is I want to feather the edges. All right. So we're going to go up to select, modify, feather. Now how much you feather it depends on the resolution. This is a pretty big, big uh, document. It's 30 by 20 inches. Um, I'm going to try a feather radius of uh, 75. Okay, we'll try that. You might have to check this a few times. Make sure that apply effect is at the canvas bound so it does it around the edges and click OK. So we have that feathering done. Now we want to add blur to it. Now if I just add blur to it now, it's going to blur the middle. We don't want it to blur the photo of Eddie. We want it to blur the edges. So we need to invert the selection. To do that, hit Shift Command I. Now the selection's inverted. You can see the marching ants are going around the outside now. All right, now we're going to add that blur. We're going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and you can see how it's blurring the edges now. And you could uh, affect the amount of blur you want. So I think just around there, like right? 576.7 in this case. And we'll click OK. So I have this first one blurred. Now I need to do that to the other three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, to the, the top right side there. I'm going to hold the Command key in and get a selection there. Make sure I'm on my uh, photo of Eddie, or I'm Jonesy, I'm sorry. And we need to feather the edges. We're going to go up to select, modify, feather. We'll do the same thing, 75, click OK, invert it, shift command I, it's inverted. Now we're going to add that blur, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and click same amount, click OK. And look at that, now it looks feathered. And you see how you have that gray that is below it coming through. Again, any color you had there, if you had black, it would be darker, but I had gray. If you had um, uh, purple, you had red, 
that would be coming through, whatever color was below there. Now we're gonna go to the lower right, hold the Commander Control E key in, click on that, um, that placeholder to get that selection. You could place, click on the image too, but I click on the placeholders. So I have that, I wanna feather it, go up to select, modify, feather, 75 again, invert it, shift command I, add that Gaussian blur, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and click OK. And there's that. And now finally, we'll go to the last layer, hold the command or control key and click on that. Make sure we're on the layer with the photo, in this case of Adrian. We're going to feather the edges, go up to select, modify, feather, 75 pixels. That's good. Um, now we want to invert it, shift command I to invert it. Then we're going to go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and click OK. And there we blurred the edges there as well. So you can see, I think that looks a little better. Uh, I have all these layers over there, but there's my montage of our cats. Now I could uh, save this as any type of file I want. I could hit Shift Command S or, or Shift Control S to bring up the save dialog. I could save it as Photoshop or a TIFF. Um, save it as a Photoshop, but I'm not going to do that yet. Uh, most labs, if you're going to send this to the lab, they want JPEGs. So you want to export it as a JPEG. Go to File, Export, Export As. And you're going to want to not resize it. So it's the you know correct size to fit a 20 by 30 image. Um, JPEG quality, make sure quality is at 100%. And you know, convert to sRGB. Most labs want sRGB color spaces. And click Export. Um, in here, I'll, I'll, I'll call it, I don't know, Kitty Photo Montage. Like that. And I'll save it to the desktop and click Save. OK. So now we exported our JPEG that I'm going to send off to a lab to be printed. Now, if I was going to put this on Instagram, I wouldn't save it that large. I would make it smaller so that I could upload it to Instagram. Um, but you know that's not the case in this instance. I'm going to get this printed. Now I want to save all my work, all these you know, layers and everything, just in case I want to come in and change anything. I'm going to save, go up to File, and I'm going to go down to Save As, like I did before, Shift-Command-S is the keyboard shortcut. And for this, uh, we'll go to the desktop, and I'm going to call this Kitty Photo Montage, but it's got .psd, and we'll click Save. All right. So now we have that saved. Now we have all these images over here that have smart objects. Um, I don't need to save those, but it will give you the option if you want to save those as well. But we're not going to. And you can see there's no need to. And like that. And I get rid of Photoshop. And there's our original images of cats right there. But then here is our JPEG that I will send off to the lab to be printed. Not there. There it is, like that. And here's our original work with this PSD right here. And if I double click on that, that will open up again into Photoshop and I could change anything or make modifications. Maybe switch out a cat for a different cat if I had another cat to switch it with. But you get the idea. Hopefully that helps you create montages for your images. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.